so on. Good morning, everybody. Uh, the um, last night, um, the movie you saw was Close. Klausy. Uh, here a year ago. Um, any comments? Um, Robert from Bavaria, did uh, Klaus sound the same on uh, video as he did uh, on uh, in person? Yeah. But there's a high presence if you're in the same room. But yeah, yeah, but he sounded the same. Yeah. Okay. And uh, the um, and you see that there's a, a different, uh, quite different uh, leadership style between uh, Klaus Kleinfeld and a, uh, Steve Ballmer. Significantly different. And we've talked about there's two ends of the leadership continuum, there's two ends of the uh, management continuum. There's, a, well, now I'm going to use Steve Ballmer as an example. There's the Steve Ballmer and or Dan Pena end where quite energetic, quite boisterous. Uh, quite enthusiastic, quite vocal, screaming. Uh, I'm told, uh, although it wasn't on the video, that Steve the Ballmer uh, uses um, <clears throat> uh, vulgarities from time to time <clears throat> and has been known to throw computers and chairs and stuff. Whereas Klaus is on the other end of the continuum, the, the very much the, the diplomat. Uh, Henry Kissinger, for those of you that are old enough to know who Henry Kissinger was, the former Secretary of State under Nixon, <coughs> and still quite a uh, prominent uh, management consultant, uh, although he, I think he's approaching 90 or maybe he just turned 90. Two different ends. Most of you that are watching this on YouTube are on Klaus Kleinfeld's end. Very few of you watching this or actually in this room or anybody that's actually attending the seminar are on the uh, the uh, Balmer Pena uh, end of the continuum, uh, and um, that's okay. Seventy-five to ninety percent of all people in the world are on the Henry Kissinger's end of the continuum. Doesn't mean you can't be an effective manager. Doesn't you know when we're talking about leadership, past, present, and future? Doesn't mean you can't have leadership skills. Uh, doesn't mean any of those things. Uh, John Wooden, who I have great admiration for. Uh, who we've talked about a little bit, and he's on the Hall of Influencers, was obviously on the, uh, the um, uh, Henry Kissinger, Klaus Kleinfeld, into the continuum. And as I said uh, yesterday, uh, Bobby Knight, who is another great basketball coach, uh, Indiana fame, um, uh, was uh, thrown through chairs and ultimately got fired, if my memory serves me correctly, from being head coach after 30 plus years at University of Indiana, because he hit a student. And Bobby Knight's not the only coach I ever hit a student. Uh, in my brief uh, teaching career, um, uh, not the, in the university, but when I taught, when I was a graduate student um, in a junior high school, uh, uh, the uh, a student hit me and I hit the student back. So, um, the, uh, of course, I, was, I think I was 25 years old. But I probably still hit the student back. So, not, even though I'm 68, but there's two ends, and a lot of times that people watch these YouTubes, or a lot of times when people well, watch the, the, my uh, DVDs, uh, and they get the information, and they hear me bellowing, yelling, and screaming, they, they think, or they, they give up and they, with the idea that I can't do this, because I, I can't be Dan, or I'm not Dan. Uh, and I've said, until I'm blue in the face, I've, I've said ad nauseum, uh, uh, for those of you on YouTube don't know what that word means, uh, Google it, um, that the, you don't have to be me. But what you have to do is follow direction and take action. Uh, reviewing my uh, messages this morning on social media, just to, they can, I didn't get to, I didn't have time to answer any of them, but I just, um, we have, a, my, my wife, uh, we, like I said to some of you, we need a new giant TV in the castle like I need AIDS. Better I have diarrhea 24 hours a day than we need another giant TV. But now we have a, a giant TV in our bedroom. Well, because I'm like Pavlov's dog, <coughs> I turn it on. 
that's not listening to the news. I'm going from CNBC to BBC to the, and so I might have been 10 minutes later behind my schedule than I normally am. So I'm scrambling around, and for the first time during the seminar, my wife beeps me downstairs because I wanted to hear the end of a BBC thing, and so, uh, but um, the, um, uh, I, I said that um, we, we all, um, we all seem to think that what we hear and what we see um, on television is vis-a-vis uh, -vis TV presenters or speakers like myself or other personal development and success coaches, that uh, that's how they act all the time. Now, my particular case, this is how I am. And uh, virtually uh, all the uh, professional personal development and success coaches that I had the privilege of knowing, and some of them wasn't such a great privilege, but, you know, um, that's not how they are. That's not how they run their lives. And uh, as, as some of you have heard the, the saying that used to be uh, become prevalent in the 70s and 80s, uh, uh, they don't walk their talk. I do walk my talk. Um, and uh, the, uh, which is, uh, there's a dichotomy, but getting back to Klaus Kleinfeld, uh, that, that is Klaus. When you, what, what you saw yesterday is Klaus Kleinfeld in person, his management style. Uh, he's an extraordinary manager, uh, and he's got very good leadership skills, although his leadership skills are what I call soft. And not soft in a derogatory sense, but soft in that, you know, he doesn't scream and yell. Klaus, uh, I hope you don't uh, get mad, but he does use occasionally as a bad word, though. Not very much, a little bit. But he has to get pretty upset to use a bad word. Whereas I use bad words all the time. I don't have to get upset at all. It's just kind of my vernacular, you know. I brush my teeth and I say fuck. I take a pee and I say shit. That, that's kind of like a pun, isn't it? Anyway. Um, <laughs> that kind of rhymes. I take a pee and then I say shit. Anyway, um, but uh, that's that's who I am, and uh, the people on the wall of uh, fame uh, that's behind the camera uh, have different management styles. Some are Klaus Kleinfelds and some are me, but most of them are Klaus Kleinfelds. They're they're not. So what I'm trying to say in <clears throat> in uh, not such a, a straightforward way is that. It's okay to have soft skills that work. But if you have soft skills that don't fucking work, and that's what most of you have, so you use it as a goddamn excuse. So even though I went through four or five minutes of saying it's okay to have soft skills and to be gentle and kind, of, if they don't work, it's not worth a shit. But you use it as an excuse. You can be tough, hard, keep people accountable, make them responsible with soft skills. What gets measured gets accomplished. But if you use soft skills and then you don't use the rest of the toolbox, and I hate that term, your management toolbox, your QLA toolbox, like you're gonna fix a fucking flat tire or something, then it's for naught. It's for naught. And I use strong language, one, because it works, and it's worked for me for over 40 years, and two, it's how I was trained. And I'm not using it as an excuse, you know, they did the best they could when they were training me, etc. Uh, my mother, my mother, who I forgot this morning, damn it, to bring, um, uh, had very soft skills, whereas my father had very tough, hard skills. Now, did anybody notice, for those of you that haven't met Klaus Kleinfeld, did anybody that, for the scene and for on film, see something that unique, that pointed, you know, that was uh, unusual, strange? I was mentioning to Matt, his, his softness. He's like, look at him, the way he's talking, he's just quiet, you know? But he knows what he's doing. Mm -hmm. Yeah. He's That's for damn sure. Yeah. Yeah, he, he's, he's an extraordinary manager. He just. He, and um, the, when he went to uh, Siemens USA, that, um, and, it's, it, and with his job was even more difficult because Siemens USA is not a real unit. It has different units, and they all report back to the, the corporate executive board, um, unless they change things, corporate executive board in uh, Munich. 
And um, so he was first put up as C Chief Operating Officer of America, and he became Chief Executive Officer of America. But he really had no line authority. He couldn't make Marcus do fire Marcus, so to speak. Because Marcus, if he ran a big division, a turbine division, he reported back to the uh, head at the Corporate Executive Committee, which is uh, which, which most European companies have that uh, run the company. But he turned around USA without that line authority. And as far as I can tell or remember, it was the first time Siemens USA ever made any money, even though they were one of the largest employers in the USA with, I think, 80,000 employees. And he turned that around, and that was really his his platform to um, ultimately become chief executive of Siemens a couple years later. So it's an extraordinary feat uh, <coughs> that he accomplished, you know, and that's why he became a CEO in early 2005 of the 20th or 23rd largest company in, on the planet, which was Siemens at the time. So, but he has soft skills, he, but they're extraordinary. He his his follow up. His um, his uh, accountability, his uh, you know, uh, making people responsible is is very very good. I mean, it's extraordinary. And as he said uh, <clears throat> in the when he was here a year ago, he has two management meetings uh, a week, Tuesday and Friday. Uh, and one would think with an organization that large. You know, um, and and then and at Alcoa, the organization is a lot smaller. But with that many people in the hundreds of thousands of employees, you know, how do you have two management meetings, senior management meetings, uh, a week? Um, and uh, and I, I can't speak for Klaus. I don't know. I, I don't think I've ever asked him this question. But he likes those management meetings about as much as I do, which means he doesn't. But why do we do it? Because one, they work, and we want the people to know that we care. Uh, and uh, just like me, I'm sure, and I've never asked him this question either, that I'm sure there's some days he doesn't feel like having those management meetings. I'm absolutely positive. But as Alistair Cook, I pointed out, the great BBC presenter, TV presenter, being a professional is doing great work when you don't feel like it. And that's what kids don't understand. Well, I got a migraine. I got diarrhea. My, 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 my sister just got run over by a car. My mother's got arthritis. She's got, um, my dad's got gout, a, a gout attack. Or wh whatever the reason. And there's a million reasons. Just as we talked about the alibis for failure, um, and remember there was 60 or 70 of them, all of which are real, those are medicine but not made up shit that I got over the 20 years, alibis why you're not successful. Uh, there are alibis why you don't get to work on time. There's the alibis, and when you start doing your weekly reports, like Tana this week emailed me, of course she was here, but Tana this week emailed me, can I, my, uh, my report be late because we had homework the first night, I think, of the seminar. Well. In the real world, I mean, you you follow up. I just had Kim follow up from two or three emails that I haven't gotten any responses from back from. Today is what, Wednesday? I sent the emails out over the weekend. Now, unless the guy's dead, in a coma, or in outer space, and even in outer space, I should have got a response. Most of you, you know, for those of you that get hundreds of emails, you gotta just, uh, you, uh, you gotta throw your fucking computers away. There's nobody at this table that should get hundreds of emails. Nobody. For any reason whatsoever. I don't care if you have a, a 10 million affiliates. That all give you a million dollars a second. If you have to run your business getting hundreds of emails a day, you might as well jump in front of a, a bus. Because first of all, you can't follow up on hundreds of emails a day in a proper way. You can't. You can't give it any cogent thought. You can't give it any, you know. And that's why they have assistants and personal assistants and assistants to assistants. And when I was running a big uh, international company, I had three personal assistants that ran my life. 
Klaus used to have three. I don't know how many he has now, but he used to have three. Three personal assistants, and they used to kind of divvy up his work schedule in life, just as mine, and uh, currently I have two, to divvy up my life and structure. And you have to give them the authority and the responsibility to answer questions. Because if they have to come back to you for everything that they read, then they, you might as well be reading them yourself. And when, you, when you're doing this from a third world country, when English isn't their first language, I mean, we're all separated by common language, English, but the way you translate it and interpret English in different parts of the world is quite different. Uh, and the way they do in Asia is quite different. It's things that you say um, uh, don't, in the communication process, aren't translated. Uh, uh, or they, what I'm trying to say is they are too often translated directly and not in the spirit of the sentence. And so you, 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 you get, uh, you can get uh, uh, double negatives, double positives, and you can get a lot of bad stuff. But you're right, Jack. Uh, Klaus has soft skills, and he's very good, though. He's extra, extraordinary, and I've, it was a pleasure working, for him, working with him for those 10 years that I, I helped him with his career. Uh, any other comments about Klaus or the meeting that we had, or the meeting that he had? with us uh, about a year ago this month. Okay, uh, thank you YouTubers. We'll see you at lunch. <clears throat>